Hey guys, welcome back to Roundtable Talk and welcome back to the channel where I dissect, analyse and review the latest releases as well as some of our classics. You're joining me here today as we do our monthly rundown of some of the best tracks uh, that have been released this month, the ones that I've been listening to and going through some you may have heard and some you may have not. Before I do jump into the playlist, please do remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, follow me on the social links below and if you do want to take a listen to the playlist, there will be a Spotify link in the uh, description box below. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to waste too much time, I'm going to dive straight into the list. Um, so yeah, uh, first up on this playlist, um, of course you can't have a, a playlist of, of new music recently without having some pop smoke on there, uh, rest in peace to that guy. Yeah, I was really impressed uh, with his uh, posthumous album, um, I thought it was a really well put together piece of work that showcased um, all of the potential that, that pop smoke had, in my opinion, to be the next superstar um, after Drake. I couldn't pick just one track uh, from the album to go on there. Um, it's quite a long album and there were uh, a lot of highlights for me, um, but I would say that you know the track uh, Gangster, the track Got It On Me, and the track Something Special uh, were really the ones that stood out to me as tracks that, that showed the full range of what Pop Smoke was capable of. He had all the tools and you know, being just 20 years old all the time to, to, to grow his sound and to, to take over the mainstream really. Um, especially with tracks like Something Special, obviously sampling a, a classic hip hop record and also having the drill sound to use uh, as well as you know, the, the 57 worship that he does on, on tracks like Gangster and Got It On Me. Um, but yeah, a uh, big fan of those tracks and a big fan of that album. Speaking of the, I guess, Gangster Rap Revival uh, that's going on uh, a little bit recently um, is uh, Benny the Butcher's track, Deal or No Deal. Um, not much to say uh, about this track apart from it's, you know, fantastic rhyme schemes. Um, and it's just, it's just hard, it's just a hard track. Then we've got uh, the return of J. Cole with uh, the double header, the climb back, uh, Lion King on Ice. I did do a, a full reaction video uh, to that with my thoughts on it. Um, so please do uh, head across the channel and watch that. It will be linked in the description box below too. Staying with Dream Built, Loot um, released a track called My Life, uh, which really did uh, blow me away. I don't really listen to, to Loot very often. Um, I don't think I've ever really heard a full project from him, just guest verses. But this track, uh, Loot, really comes through with a really well sung, soaring hook, uh, really intricate verses, and some great production that you know brings in uh, sort of orchestral sounds, which I, I really enjoyed. Then we've got the latest from Billie Eilish called My Future. Um, I've just uploaded a, a reaction video to that track. Um, definitely really enjoyed it, but as I said, do head back across the channel to, to see my full reaction to that. And the same can be said of the new Snow Allegra track called Dying For Your Love. Um, I'm a, a massive Snow Allegra stan, so yeah, really enjoyed that, but as I said, there's a reaction video on the channel, so if you are interested to hear what I thought of that track, do, do watch the video. Next up, it's Low Stepper with uh, Weekend Love. Um, Low Stepper just never seems to miss, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's a, a feel-good, dancey track, uh, perfect for the summer if we were all allowed out a bit more, but um, but yeah, it's a yeah, great track. And then we've got Don Tolliver uh, with Clap, a track promoting um, Fast and Furious, uh, I think number nine right now? Um, but yeah, 80 Sims, uh, Infectious Melodies, and just sees Don Tolliver carry on where he left off on uh, that last album. We've got Georgia Smith with a track called By Any Means. Um, it feels like she's building up to the release of an album. I think she's released two or three tracks um, over the past couple of months. Um, but yeah, it's uh, nothing too uh, different for, for Georgia. But again, you know, you can't question uh, her vocals, her voice, um, as well as you know, production choices are, are always really on point. There's also the standout track from uh, Summer Walker's uh, latest EP, um, which happens to feature uh, My Guy P&D. It's called My Affection, and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely in, uh, I would say more P&D's uh, wheelhouse than Summer Walker's usual one, um, but it's got that dark Toronto sound that, that I really love, that, and it continues to, to show the chemistry that, that these two have shown um, on their previous collaborations, and with you know Summer Walker's collaborations with other members of OVO2, including you know Drake, of course, um, and, and Division. Then we've got a really cool collaboration between uh, Skip Marley, Rick Ross and Ari Lennox um, with a, a really like smooth, soulful track called Make Me Feel. Um, again, yeah, only really randomly heard this track, uh, I think on like Spotify Shuffle or something. But yeah, a, a really great track and um, features a, a really great Rick Ross verse who just seems to fit on, on this type of production so well, um, as well as some great uh, vocal chemistry and duet singing between uh, Skip Marley and Ari. Next up, we can't leave out uh, Taylor Swift, um, who dropped one of, if not her best album, Out of the Blue, uh, just the other day. The whole album sees her uh, you sort of pivot away for, from the pop sound that she's used since transitioning from, from sort of country music um, to a more, um, as the album title would suggest, to a more folky sound. Um, but it's continued her artistic trajectory upwards as well, and um, with more 
whimsical songwriting, a more mature, melancholy uh, production vibe, and working with some really interesting uh, singer-songwriters like Justin Vernon, like uh, Lillian Singer of The National, and like Jack Antonoff. So yeah, um, a lot of this album, in my opinion, evokes uh, much of uh, Lana Del Rey sound. Um, but as I said, uh, Taylor Swift's writing uh, really does elevate it as well and I think it really does suit her uh, this sound too. Standout track uh, for me and the track that makes the playlist is her collaboration with uh, Bon Iver um, and Justin Vernon um, called Exile. Features a really moving performance from, from both of them with uh, emotive pianos, uh, really good vocal chemistry uh, between the two, especially towards the end of the track. And the key change towards the end of, of the track itself really will uh, give you goosebumps. Um, it's one of those tracks that I think maybe one of the only tracks this year that came close to making me cry. But yeah, I'd also say, you know, the entire album really is a triumph. And uh, yeah, definitely one that I think is going to be on a lot of people's end of year list. Next up, we've got AJ Tracy of Mabel with a track called West 10. It sees AJ Tracy's pretty much sticking to the, the formula that works. But this time, rather than a 90s or 80s sample, um, he's got Mabel to, to sing on the track in what sounds like a, a 90s or 80s sample. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's a really uh, feel-good track. Again, perfect for the summer. Um, and I would say AJ Tracy has kind of taken the position that Tiny Templar used to occupy um, with this sort of pop, uh, grime crossover. Um, and I think he's doing it in a really great way, obviously updated for the modern audience but I think he's doing it in a really great way that doesn't take away from his uh, own artistic integrity on his own albums as well um, but yeah great track then we've also got the uh, collaboration between uh, Ty Dolla Sign, Kanye West and FKA Twigs and Skrillex uh, called Ego Death um, I did film a reaction to uh, this entire track um, way back at the start of the month um, so please do check on my channel for that then we've got Dominic Fike uh, with a track called Politics and Violence from his latest album um, I haven't actually listened to the album yet, I am planning to do a reaction to it, but I heard this track on, on Shuffle um, and it makes me very excited to hear what he's got in store on, on that album. Then we've got the reunion of uh, rapper Blue, um, uh, as well as the producer Exile. Sees the pair back together again and to build on the legacy, I guess, that they built with uh, the album Below the Heavens, um, which... Oh, I literally can't remember when that came out. I think, I think way back late to, late 2000s, maybe even early 2000s. Um, but yeah, it, it became a, a cult classic and for me is, is one of the best hip hop albums, maybe ever. But this new album called Miles is of course, you know, really soulful, true grown man rap and sees uh, Blue in particular uh, reflecting on uh, the last, you know, 15 years uh, in the rap game. But Blue sounds really hungry as well, which I think has been lacking from a lot of his previous releases um, and Exile production never lets you down. Easily one of the best rap albums of the year. The tracks that made uh, the playlist for me were uh, a track called Miles Away and another track called Troubled Waters. Um, but yeah, I uh, definitely recommend the, the entire album. Then we've got an unexpected collaboration between uh, Mr. Motherfucking Esquire and uh, Madlib called Black Mirror. I haven't listened to Esquire for years, probably not since uh, his Kismet tape, but he sounds revitalized on this vintage Madlib beat. Um, and I think it just goes to show that Madlib really does, as a producer, bring the best out of whoever he works with, which is a really valuable talent for, for any producer, and I think Madlib probably does it better than anyone. Real testament to his talent, and I'd love to hear more of this uh, from uh, from Esquire, as I think he can, can rap with the best of them. Next up, it's uh, some more posthumous music, unfortunately, um, from Juice World. Never been the, the biggest fan of, of Juice World, but have enjoyed certain songs over the years, particularly a track called Lean With Me, from uh, I think from his debut album. I would say, though, that the, the posthumous release, Legends Never Die, really does honor his legacy. Um, and again, like Pop Smoke's album, uh, really showcases the potential that, that he had to be a, a really massive star, um, incorporating the, the emo y punk sounds uh, and hip hop styles and clashing them together in a, a really interesting way. So, yeah, rest in peace to that man as well. Um, but yeah, I'd say my favourite track for, from the album was a, a track called Titanic, just different for the type of juice world that I like. A more dark, introspective uh, sound, uh, I guess, more than more lyrics. Then we've got a new track from James Blake called I'm Even Real. Um, and this track seems to uh, bring together a lot of the sounds that James has dabbled in over you know the last 10 years or however long he's been working. It's an emotive piece that might be one of his best ever tracks. It's got uh, very hip hop inspired drums, vocal manipulation, soft piano, uh, as well as like a really sort of gorgeous orchestral sound uh, in the background. But yeah, just a, a really outstanding track. And I think one that, as I said, might go on to be uh, one of his best ever tracks. 
Then we've got a really perfect pairing of Kei Trinada and Lucky Day. Lucky Day is up there um, with Giveon as one of the most exciting uh, new R&B artists um, to come out in, in the last couple of years. While Kei Trinada is easily one of uh, the best modern producers um, working at the moment. Um, this track sees them both embracing a, a pretty 80s groove um, that just seems to work, I have to be perfectly honest. And, and again, I think it's just a, a really perfect playlist type of track. Next up it's Leanna Le Havis uh, with a track called Read My Mind from her latest album. Again not really uh, changing up her, her sound um, but when the sound is this beautiful why would you change it? I'd say Read My Mind was the standout track for me but um, she's released a, a lot of music in the lead up to this um, which uh, ended up on the album which I really enjoyed and has made uh, my playlists over the last couple of months like Bittersweet um, and like other tracks as well I think like Can't Fight um, but yeah, yeah, a great album, definitely another one that I'd recommend in the floor. Next up it's Joey Badass uh, with a track called Shine. Um, I did record a, a full reaction to his, uh, his latest collection of tracks uh, that came out uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, this was my favourite track on their production, really outstanding. Of course not a sample that hasn't been used in hip hop before but really works here um, and sees Joey rapping like he's got something to prove. But yeah, whole collection is good, definitely check out my, uh, my full reaction on the channel. Then we've got uh, Drake and DJ Khaled with the track Grease. I decided to throw Grease as, as the track on the playlist for me. It's the vibiest of vibes. I don't personally care that he sounds a bit like The Weeknd. Uh, people like Frank Ocean, Childish Gambino, The Weeknd himself, all use vocal manipulation to alter their pitch and to, to change things up in terms of a little bit of style. Um, and it only ever seems to be an issue uh, when Drake uh, does these sorts of things. Um, just says a lot about the, the double stands that people hold Drake to. Um, but for me, uh, it shows Drake trying to, you know, branch out, experiment a bit more. And while the other DJ Khaled track, uh, Popstar, as well as his collaboration with Heading One, uh, while they're good, um, they don't really do anything new for me and don't really push the envelope. Um, so uh, yeah, that's why Grease kind of stands out to me as, as Drake doing something different. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Also did record a, a first reaction to that, so, so please do check it out on the channel. Next up is Octavian and Future uh, with a track called Rari. I'm a big fan of Octavian, uh, you know, he's from the UK, but doing uh, some really interesting things uh, with his sound. Um, this track in particular reminds me a lot of uh, T-Minus's work back in the, uh, the early 2010s, um, which is a production style that I really, really enjoyed, and he and Future uh, work perfectly together, so yeah, great track. Next, it's Schoolboy Q and The Gorillas. Main thing about this track is that Schoolboy Q uh, sounds absolutely revitalized, and I think he does need this kind of production. I think he needs to move away from traditional hip hop production. He's, he's been there and he's done it. Um, and I think this kind of uh, different type of style um, really does bring a different type of energy out of him, which I really appreciate it. So I'd love to hear more of this kind of thing uh, whenever uh, Schoolboy does drop a new project. Then we've got a track from the new Currency EP slash, I guess, full mixtape maybe, called The Outrunners, um, and it sees Cur Currency collaborate again with uh, producer Harry Fraud. I'm a big fan of uh, their last uh, collaborative effort, I think, which was a like, covert EP all the way back in 2011. So I was pretty certain that I was gonna like this tape. Fraud's production is always stellar. Um, and this track called uh, 90 Degree I Rock, I think you would say, um, sees, uh, you know, currency as consistent as he always is. Um, but he's also Wiz Khalifa with a, a really fantastic performance which, like I said, kind of just brings that feeling back of, of a cushion OJ Wiz. But yeah, currently is just ridiculously uh, consistent uh, with, you know, full length projects. He puts them out all the time, like I'd say every couple of months is a new currency project, but throw on any of his projects and you're guaranteed to have a good time. Um, production is uh, always fantastic and here uh, I'm a huge fan of Harry Ford's work so yeah just the whole EP is great but if you're going to listen to one track uh, the track with Wiz probably is to stand out for me. Then we've got uh, Logic with Open Mic slash Aquarius from his latest and supposedly last album uh, No Pressure. Um, the whole album really is just a love letter to an era of hip-hop that uh, I grew up on and probably did shape uh, a lot of the music that I love now. But yeah, I did record a, a full reaction to the album um, and I'd really appreciate it if you headed over there and watched it before. Then we've got Ella Air with a track called Careless. Another track that's not particularly uh, reinventing the wheel uh, in terms of pop, um, but it's got a, a almost tropical sounding melody 
um, and really strong vocals from Ella that, that made it stand out for me. Then we've also got Coffee with a track called Pressure. Um, this track for me sounds exactly like the type of music that I would love to hear Rihanna making, um, if Rihanna was even still making music. <laughs> but yeah, um, really great track. Obviously huge reggae uh, dancehall vibes. Um, and just a really good time. Then we've got uh, Lupe Fiasco with a track called uh, LP95 um, from his uh, latest EP, which is a really intricate uh, and detailed conceptual EP. And one that I won't pretend to understand or on first listen, I literally only listened to it once. Um, but yeah, this for me was the outro uh, to the project um, and stood out to me as uh, the most uh, accessible, maybe, uh, and concise uh, track on the project. Then we've also got uh, a collaboration between Sam Smith and Burner Boy, which on paper is a bit of an odd pairing, um, but really does work. And lastly, we've got a track from Disclosure called uh, Doha, I think you'd say, or uh, in brackets, Marley Marley. Um, yeah, just a, a really great uh, use of, uh, I think, African uh, style instrumentation, uh, along with the usual uh, Disclosure sound, um, that I think probably is my favorite of the singles they've released uh, so far for the upcoming album. Um, everything else has tr seemed a little bit try hard for me, but, but this track uh, definitely was one that I was rocking with. But yeah, that's it for the, the playlist for this month. Let me know your favourite tracks uh, that have been released this month uh, from any project, any genre. Um, I'm interested to hear um, any that I might have missed um, and just to hear you guys' thoughts really on these things. Um, but yeah, apart from all that, uh, please do remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video um, and follow me on all the social links below. And like I said, do check out the, uh, the Spotify playlist in the uh, description box and also check out uh, my uh, full reactions to a lot of the tracks that I've listed here. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I uh, hope everyone's staying safe, staying well, and I'll see you for the next reaction. See you there.